So let's suppose we are given the following three vectors and we want to find dot product of vectors a and b and dot product of vectors b and c. Now before we begin our calculations, let's recall what a unit vector is. Let's recall some facts about unit vectors. So by definition, unit vectors have a magnitude of 1. So that means i hat, j hat, and k hat all have a magnitude of 1. Now likewise, by definition, vector i hat lies along the x-axis, j hat lies along the y-axis, and k hat lies along the z-axis. So that means each one of these vectors lie at an angle perpendicular to one another, at a 90 degree angle to one another. Now let's, uh, let's recall our definition of our formula for that product. So the formula for that product is given by the following equation. The magnitude of vector A multiplied by the magnitude of vector B multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Now, that basically means that if we take any two unit vectors that lie along the same axis, for example, i hat and i hat, and we take the dot product of these vectors, we'll get 1 because cosine of the angle 0 is 1. So we get 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. Likewise, dot product of k hat and k hat is 1, and dot product of j hat and j hat is also 1. Now, what if we take the dot product of two unit vectors that lie at an angle of 90 degrees to one another? For example, i hat and j hat. Well, because cosine of the angle 90 is 0, we'll get a value of 0. So, with that said, let's move on to part A. So, we want to find dot product of vectors A and B. So we have vector A, dot product, vector B. So notice for vector A, we don't have the k term. And that means we simply put a zero in front of our k term. So what we're essentially doing is we're taking the dot product of each one of these vectors. So we take the dot product of the x component and x component, dot product of the x and y component, dot product of the x and z component. And we continue this with every single term. So let's begin. Dot product of 10 i hat and dot product of 2 i hat. So we get 20 times 1. Dot product of 10 i hat and 3 j hat. So we get 30 times 0, 0 because i hat and j hat gives us 0. Likewise, we have 10 i hat and negative 10 k hat. So we get negative 100 times 0. So now we move on to the second term. We have negative 5 j hat. Uh, dot product 2 i hat, we have negative 10 times 0, negative 5 j hat, dot product 3 j hat, we have negative 15 times 1, and we have negative 5 j hat and negative 10 k hat, so we have 50 times 0. Now notice our last term of vector a is 0, so all these become 0, and we're simply left with 20 minus 15 equals 5. So this is our value, our scalar value of our dot product of vectors A and B. Now let's move on to part B. So once again, we take vector A dot or vector B uh, dot product vector C and we follow the same exact procedure. So we have 2i hat dot product 6i hat, we get 12 times 1. I have 2i hat and 1j hat, so I have 2 times 0, uh, so 0. I have 2i hat and 1k hat, so I have 2 times 0, so that goes to 0. Plus, we have 3j hat and 6i hat, so that's 18 times 0. 3i hat and 1j hat, that's 3 times 1. 3j hat and 1k hat, that gives us 0. And finally, the last term, negative 10k hat times 6i hat, that gives us 60 times 0 negative 10k hat and 1j hat, that gives us 10 times 0, negative 10 times 0, and finally negative 10k hat multiplied by positive 1k hat, that gives us negative 10. So finally we sum this up and we get 12 plus 3 minus 10, and that gives us 
15 minus 10, that gives us 5. So once again, the same exact value as before. So if we take the dot product of A and B and dot product of B and C, we get the same exact scalar value of 5.